The more I wear the Mud Man, the more I love the Mud Man. And I don't know if it's because I dunked it in so much diesel and hydraulic oil, but it fits a lot better than it did when I first got it, okay? Take a look at it. It already has some scratches on the screen, some battle scars. Right now it has some dirt in it. I'm out here, I just, I just, I haul oil field equipment, and I'm out here, look at this dirt. This is, it looks like Mars out here. So, this oil well, we're servicing this oil well out here. And you can kind of see over there where we got stuck in the sand, because there was a dead man there that was driving around the, that oil well, and there was a dead man in the way. I had to stop, and as soon as he stopped, he sink into the dirt. So, we tried, tried digging that dead man out, it didn't work. We got a, a uh, track hoe over here that pulled us out. A lot of times, in the oil field when you're hauling equipment, it's just like, you know you're gonna get stuck, everybody knows it, they're just like, drive until you get stuck, and then we'll pull you the rest of the way through. And they get like a bulldozer or a track hoe to keep on pulling the truck. This mud man is really rugged. You know, when you're actually doing stuff, this is like, it, it, it feels so tough. Okay, and it's just one of the compromises for it for it not being as comfortable as some of my other watches. Let me see if I grab a few. I got my G-Shock bag here. The G-Shock bag is not that tough, ironically. It's kind of coming apart at the seams. You can see some of the seams are starting to rip. It was only $2.50. Let me find the GBDH2000. That's my example of a very... Uh, comfortable watch. Here's a DWH 5600. I'm gonna I'm gonna test that out as a notification watch coming up. Uh, oh, here it is. The GBDH 2000, extremely comfortable, very pliable band, great sweat management, and you see the wings are integrated into the band. That's a great idea. They did not do that with the Mudman GW 9500. G-Shock has the the hard plastic wings. So it kind of pulls hair. There was a guy in the comments asking how bad the hair pull was, and I think that I saw him on other videos asking the same question. I forget his name. He was he was doing extensive online research to see how bad the hair pulling was. It's not that bad. It's just that it you know it will it will pull your hair a little bit, but you know you get used to it, or maybe it just pulls away the hairs, the errant hairs that would get snagged once they're gone they're gone it feels better but it's the whole watch feels a lot more pliable than when i first unboxed it and again i don't know if i broke into the mud man or i broke the mud man in but this thing took a lot of baths in diesel okay in hydraulic oil and so maybe maybe that did soften it up a little bit i don't know 100 percent confidence in this watch in terms of durability the scratches, I mean, it has a mineral glass screen, so yeah, it has got scratched. I made a short about about the first scratch. The first scratch is the deepest. Let me get my pointer pen out. I'll show you exactly where it's scratched. Right there. That's the first scratch. And there's another light scratch that I don't even know if it will... Oh yeah, you can kind of see it right by uh, the back of the head of the 9. Okay? Doesn't bother me that much. What happened was I got a lot of like the 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 muddy, oily mud caliche stuff. You could see that short, and I wiped it off. And I forget who asked me. I think it was RB. He's like, "Doesn't it scratch the screen?" I'm like, "No, it doesn't scratch the screen. Come on, it's just caliche and oil." And yeah, it scratched the screen. He was right. And a lot of people are telling me not to tap with a metal. Uh, I don't think that scratches the screen at all. It's abrasion that scratches the screen. But there are scratches, and there are battle scars. I like that. It, it, that's how a G-Shock watch should be, right? Uh, so anyways, the two main gripes I had in my initial review was that it's, it's not as comfortable. And again, that's by design. It's meant to be rugged. So you're giving up a little bit of comfort for durability, which is a fair bargain, because this is so durable. So this is my work watch. I wear it to work zero hesitation and again when you're talking about a blue collar work watch like it's not like watches are just breaking all the time because of work usually what happens is the pins the pins pop off right and so these these pins there's no not a chance you're going to pop off the weak point in the band i think would be right here 
if anything's going to rip or tear, it would be right here. But again, I working around rotating equipment, I always have in the back of my head that maybe it'll get caught and I'll have to like, you know, say if it's caught and I have to like pull my hand away. I'm pretty sure if if my if my the hand depended on it, I think I could rip this. But that's a good thing, okay? Because I have another watch, the Construction King by Bertucci, where like the it has a NATO strap that's like virtually indestructible, and that if you work around rotating equipment, may not be the best best thing. But I did I did make a a, a video about the Mudman where I put in a lot of B-roll of guys working on the oil field. And I had some guys working the rig floor and some guys working on a snubbing unit. But I don't even know if they wear watches on the rig floor. I, w I would have to <laughs> ask some uh, rig hands if they do because, you know, with with that string spinning all the time, I mean, and you're throwing chains, you might not want a watch. And I can't remember ever seeing anybody wear a watch on the rig floor. So that that could be a subject of another video. You know, what do they wear on the rig floor? I don't work the rig floor. Pretending you working the rig floor is kind of like stolen valor in the you know, in the oil field. I mean, guys who work the rig floor get a lot of respect. Uh, now, the other gripe I had about this watch, the Mudman GW9500, is that, oh, look at all the glare. Look at that glare. There's a lot of glare on the screen. And I had a problem with that. And a lot of other viewers had a serious problem with that. And there's a, a bunch of guys who actually returned their watch. They were totally dissatisfied with the, with the visibility. This is the positive display, Mudman GW9500, and it's just glare. I deal with it. There are some like dull and dead spots at certain angles, and at night when you turn on the light, sometimes it's like it's it's blank, and I think it's because of total internal reflection and polarized light, etc. It bothered me at first, but it bothered me like just because. It's $380. Why can't G-Shock just get it right? Why can't they make a, a watch with good visibility? You know? And I made a video where I compared the Mudman to the AE-1500. Find that in the bag of watches. It's like you reach in, pull up watches. It's like panning for gold. You get the watch you want. Here it is. The AE-1500. Like This is what Casio can do in terms of like legibility, thickness, and glare. See how th this, the AE 1500's catch and glare, but you can still kind of read the numbers, right? And when the Mudman catches the glare, you kind of lose it. So, that is a problem. Those are the two main problems. That's what keeps me from giving this a full five stars in my initial review. And I've gotten used to the, to the discomfort like, I, I'd say that I'm used to it now, and I actually like it, just because it's so durable. When you wear it, you feel like, you know, that that you could start throwing throwing punches or chucking your knucks or whatever, you know, get into a, a uh, like, a scrum, and it's like, you'd have no problem. Like, you could, like, you could run through a gauntlet, right, wearing this thing, and, and it doesn't catch, like, it's design, it doesn't, it doesn't catch stuff as much. Like a doorway or items, there's no way that the pins are popping out. It's just super rugged, super tough. It do, it does it, the confidence in it does it does give you like a boost of of energy. You know, like you feel like you feel like you feel tougher wearing it. You know, I mean, it's like not in the back of your head. Like, oh, I hope if I get in a scrum, my watch doesn't pop off. That would be embarrassing. Or you know, if you're swinging a hammer at work, you know, there's more than a few times that I've popped the pins off a watch just swinging a hammer because all the flexation you know in your wrist it can it can bust pins you know of a, of a El Cheapo Casio not so with this one all right and uh whose watch is beeping there's a watch beeping in this bag if someone's thinking about buying the Mudman I'd be like yeah definitely get the positive display the negative display one, like the green one, looks really cool with the negative with the negative display, like as fashionable. It's like it's really tacked cool. It looks like like a GI Joe watch. And that green one with the negative display looks cool, but it will be a huge pain in the neck just to read your watch. So this is the only one that I recommend. There's three colors in the United States for sale, and this one with that's black and has some red accents and the positive display. This is the one I recommend. 
This is a good G-Shock experience. It's it's pretty big, right? Uh, as as G-Shocks generally are, but the reason it's big is because of its durability. And this is actually not as big as or thick as some of the other G-Shock watches of the past. They've got their their protection technology down that that these watches are more diminutive. Like I, this watch is, is thinner than a range man, which is the GW9300, like the previous uh, mud resistant watch to this. Oh, and that that's like that's the biggest thing for me is the mud resist. You know, like like I was saying about having to dig up all this dirt. I mean, the dirt, the muds, grease, grime, slime, burrito grease. I mean, all these things attack a watch, and there's like a gasket system behind the buttons. That that these buttons press the button inside the module, and there's like a like you know like a like a uh, stem that has gaskets that this button will push the one inside the module, and that gasket system and the stem keeps it uh, keeps the all the all the slime and everything from getting inside the watch. So that's what mud resist is all about, and that's my favorite feature. And you know there's a triple sensor, so the compass. Which, even though it's LCD, is still, you know, a nice, legible compass. Really useful as a compass. I mean, right now I'm in a truck, so the the engine is a huge, you know, Detroit diesel engine. All that metal is messing up uh, the compass. But you also have the barometer, which around here, I mean, you can like look off in the distance, like look, look at you can see, look how far you can see. Like you can just see for miles. Right, and so, uh, like you can see a storm forming, and you know you look at you grab your phone, and you look at the weather app, and it says you know sunny, and you'll be like that's it's not it's not sunny that I can see a storm in the distance, but the iPhone is using cell data, and and you know whatever the weather report is, well storms pop up, you know without the weather service knowing. And isolated storms too. This barometer can can kind of indicate for you whether whether a storm might be brewing based on the the pressure dropping. And there's a there's a uh, there should be a chart at the top, which the, it's been getting bad readings on account of you know being in set in and out of a truck and everything. But but it should be a continuous graph, so you'd see if if the graph tails off and drops it might it might uh, be a thunderstorm so that's useful and then uh, other very useful features of course are the uh, see where it says Sun this is the sunrise sunset so you have to enter in your your coordinates manually for this to be very accurate but it's a good idea. Like I haul permitted loads. Like this vehicle I'm driving is is gross weight 100,000. Uh, and other and other vehicles too are restricted by their permit to to daylight hours in terms of driving. And so you want to know when the sunrise and sunset is to, to for route planning, right? Uh, and then the altimeter. This it tells your uh, uh, elevation. Let me get out of this back to the main time and the altimeter tells you your elevation above sea level and then there's a nice light button so all these buttons can be pressed with gloves I've tested that by wearing my work gloves and these are impact gloves pretty thick right pretty dirty now too so it looks like I've been doing a lot of button pressing based on how worn these gloves are but anyways, you can you can press the buttons. I'll just I'll just prove it because I know that someone in the comments will be like video or it didn't happen. All right, I'm wearing my gloves, pressing the buttons. All right, and then I'm gonna use my thumb to get back to the main time. All right, so so they stick out enough that you can press the buttons with a glove. All right, but the this barrel around the the button cylinder is metal, so it protects them from incidental presses, and and it's really good. It's it, this is a great watch. It's fantastic. I mean, I know three hundred eighty dollars is a lot, but but my review review of the watch is that you know uh, 
big. I might go full five on this watch, you know? On Amazon, I'm going to give it five stars. You know what I mean? On Amazon, it'll be like five stars because like there's like star inflation on Amazon. But just just the glare. If, if they had got it that there wasn't so much glare, it would be a perfect five, okay? But like I said, I, I deal with the glare. I've gotten used to it. I've gotten over it. And, and I enjoy this watch. And here's the thing. This for me is a work watch. This is a blue collar work watch, right? The question is, you know, if I had a desk job, would I be wearing this watch? And the answer is no. If I was like a white collar guy, I would probably be wearing the GBDH 2000. Okay, that would be my watch I wear all the time. But have, being, you know, in the rough and tumble world that I live in, I wear this watch, the Mudman GW9500. So, five stars. I'm just going to say five stars, all right? I told you the problems, but in this re-review, I'm just letting you know that I, I'm able to deal with the problems. For me, they're not a deal breaker. I deal with the glare. I get over it. And I get on with life. And the comfort, I get used to it. And I guess it's all that diesel, but it's broken in. The Mudman GW 9500. Five stars. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.